Good everybody, welcome back to the Blitz City Podcast and today we're talking about players who are slated for a big season coming up next year. Guys who are going to have breakout seasons or just the best season of their careers, whether they're juniors, sophomores, freshmen, or this is their last year of college football, they're going to have big years next season. In my opinion, this is all my opinion, let me say that too, and I'll tell you why I feel that way about these players. Uh, but before we get started, man, please, if you have not subscribed, consider doing so. It costs you nothing, just a click of a button. Um, if you like this video, please actually like it okay and then share it so that other people's man other people may enjoy it as well and if you would like to donate to the channel you can do that right here okay that's always an option i have a lot of content coming up you know these trips and everything do cost money so if you would like to help out you can do so with that being said let's get into the video now guys the first guy we're going to start off with Shamar Savage. I did a player profile video on him. Shamar Savage, wide receiver from Prairie View a and 6'4", over 200 pounds. This dude is all muscle. Built like A.J. Brown for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I mean, dude, bro. When I look at Shamar Savage, his game is just that. He's a savage. You see, last year, he wasn't a guy, right? He had guys ahead of him, but he still was able to have 20 receptions, 448 yards, and two touchdowns. Going into him, what I believe this is last year of college football eligibility, Shamar Savage is the guy now. Prairie View has a very good chance to get back to the SWAT championship. And if that's possible with the guys that they brought in, even the other receivers that they brought in, it needs to be led through Shamar Savage. He is the guy. He's big. He's strong. He is a physical specimen with the catch radius of... I don't want to make a I don't want to make a crazy comparison, but he's he has a he has a really great catch radius. That's what I'm trying to say. It's huge. He can jump. He can jump out the gym. Okay. He can use his body to shield off defenders. You not even don't even try to jam him. You you don't have a corner his size. You don't even have a corner who can match the strength of that guy. So you got to give him a little cushion. He's a matchup nightmare. Shamar Savage is going to have a big year going into next season. Next up. Eric Phoenix, quarterback, South Carolina State. Now, Eric Phoenix is one of those guys who we've heard, especially when he was at Benedict. You see, Eric Phoenix, man, is a winner, right? And I know a lot of people are saying, well, he's at the FCS level now. He was at the FCS level last year. He transferred from Benedict under that Coach Barry staff after winning how he did, and he transferred to an FCS school, and he got injured. But before he wasn't injured, he was balling. He was making plays. Now, going into his last season of eligibility, Eric Phoenix is a guy who can run like the wind, who is the best quarterback. And I'm taking off my garnet and blue-colored glasses when I'm saying this. This is just from a pure uh, analyst perspective. Um, he is a guy who can run like the wind. He is a guy who has a very big arm, the best quarterback that the Bulldogs have had in a few years. And now he's back under Coach Barry in a system that helped him flourish to even get to the FCS level. I think he's going to have a great final season of college football. He has a plenty of weapons at his disposal. Okay, he has a great offensive line. He has a great running back room. He is going to have a dynamic year, I'm telling you. And I've seen this with my own two eyes at camp because I've been to camp. I've been to the practices. He's looking really good. He's looking very good. He's going to have a great season, by the way. After him, Eden James, Howard University. Let's talk about Eden. Eden for the, first of all, I've been heavy on him since he committed because I saw it. I saw the talent that he brings, right? The son of NFL Hall of Famer, Edgerin James. His dad did say when he first came out of high school, he's going to be successful because I taught him everything that I know. And he stuck by it. You see, his freshman year at Howard, Eden James had 75 carries, 400 yards, two touchdowns, and average 5.3 yards per carry. The way his career has gone, it's always taken a step up gradually. He's improved the way that he's supposed to. So last year, in a sophomore season, he's gotten even more carries. Okay, he had 111 carries, 627 yards, two touchdowns still, and 5.6 yards per carry is what he averaged. So everything took a step up except for those touchdowns. That's the only thing that he needs to you know, really improve, really improve in, getting into the end zone more. But everything about him and his game and these numbers tells us that he is going to take the next step up next year, which may be 800 yards, maybe even 1,000. Wouldn't be surprised if he hit 1,000 next year. 
he's going to have a spectacular season for Howard University, and he is a he is a guy who really does need more attention. Like we know about Eden James, but he needs even more attention. He doesn't get talked about enough, and I don't understand that because Howard did make the Celebration Bowl last year. Why are we not talking about Eden like how we should be? Um, after that, man, we got Jason Prevard, a guy who nobody talks about, right, but should. Jason Prevard, Morgan State University, cornerback, going into his true sophomore season. As a freshman, do you know how hard it is? Do you know how hard it is to be on one of the best defenses in the nation? For playing for a secondary and starting for a secondary that is also one of the best in the nation and being one of the biggest contributors on that defense? Jason Provard did just that. A 6'3", 200-pound cornerback who, by the way, you love the size. You love the length. You love the way he plays. But a guy who was able to be one of the top contributors on one of the best defenses in the nation as a true freshman. You mean to tell me he isn't going to have a better year in his sophomore season when you return literally almost all of those guys on defense, including two of the guys who are in my opinion, the top two HBCU NFL draft prospects, he's going to have a fantastic season, guys. He's going to have a fantastic season. Jason Provard is a guy who, Morgan State, I've said this before, who really should look out because if he has another really good season, best believe Power 5 schools are going to come calling his phone. Now you're going to have to deal with that portal trying to retain him. But Jason Provard was the MEAC leader in pass deflections as a freshman. As a freshman, yo, he's like that. Jason Provard, coming into this season, he got a little recognition, right? They gave him third team um, all-conference preseason honors, the second team all-conference preseason honors. He should be first. Second and third team shouldn't even be mentioned with Jason. He's the, he's just that good. So he's going to have a fantastic season next season, and y'all need to keep an eye out for him, man. Really, really and truly. And don't test him. Just don't. Tell your quarterback, don't test him. Last but not least, most certainly not least, a guy who I have been advocating for since he came out of high school as well. Former three-star wide receiver, Kareem Burke. Kareem Burke was at FAMU for the first two. Got him out the portal, but we didn't, okay? So either way, I'm still a Kareem Burke fan. I'm always going to be. He is a dynamic athlete. He is an absolute nightmare in, in that you, you just don't want to cover because he can make the acrobatic catches. He can make the special catches that will make you go, oh, my God, what did I just see? That is Kareem Burke in a nutshell. He's fast. He's quick. He has great hands and a great catch radius. So look out for Kareem Burke next season. I think his first season as a starter is going to be a great one. Now, he did have a few stats. He was just behind a lot of great receivers at FAMU. He was an underclassman, so you know what happens with that. But he did, he was able to put up in his limited role six receptions and 113 yards because, again, that championship team for FAMU was loaded at the wide receiver room. So, these are my top guys next season. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this video. If you like it, please like the video, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see y'all next time on the Blitz City Podcast. I'm Kobe Orr. Again, I'm out.